Yes, uh, hello good viewers, hello good viewers. Today we are talking about infertility. What is infertility? Why has there been so much fuss and why has there been so much saturation about infertility within the community and within the country and within the people? Why has infertility become so much an issue? All, all those answers, you're going to find them here. You're going to find all those answers. What infertility is, what brings about it, how can you know that you're infertile? And what is the treatment and what are the treatment options? You're going to find them right here in this video. So first of all, you, you need to, to understand what infertility is before you proclaim yourself as your as an infertile person. Before you proclaim yourself, before you announce yourself as being infertile, before you give up, you need to understand what it is. Infertility is failure of a woman to conceive or failure of a couple to have a baby or to conceive. So the couple which is staying together, listen to that, which is staying together and having sex at least three times in a week. So there are two factors. For at least one full year. A couple that is staying together that has been having sex for at least three times in a week for at least one year. Have you done that? Or has anyone claiming to be infertile done that? So if you haven't fallen in those criterias, that is one. And if you were born with a uterus, because there are people who are born without a uterus, if you were born with a uterus, that's two. And three, if your tubes were, 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 were not broke, were not cut, what we call what we call duplication, were not cut, then you don't have to consider yourself as infertile. Because you find some people, they're in a long distance relationship, for example, they're in a long distance relationship. They meet only once in a month or once in after three months, or some people even meet once in a, once in a year. And then at the end of the day, when they this person doesn't get pregnant, this person claims themselves as infertile, which is not right. And in my finding, I found that over ninety-eight percent of the people who proclaim themselves as infertile, they are usually not. They are usually not. It's only about two percent, which which can also be found. So let us look at the causes. What are the causes? The causes we have two main causes. Two main causes of infertility or of failure to conceive. One, it's male factors. Male factors. The reasons are based from the male side. For example, uh, the insufficient sperms or low sperm count and all those things. But today we are looking at the female side mainly. And that is a different video that you will, you will go and see on my channel. The female factors, the female factors are mainly subdivided into two also. One, We'll be looking at the female reproductive system because any abnormality in the female reproductive system can bring about infertility. Or we look at the hormones, the female hormones, or we look at the female hormones. So it's either the reproductive system, the structures within the reproductive system, or the female hormone. hormones. When we look at the female reproductive system, it has parts. It has parts. Right from the vagina, vaginal canal, up to the eggs. Or the ovum or the anina ovaries and each part each part within the female reproductive system is important in the process of conception in the process of getting a baby in the process of in the process of becoming pregnant so any abnormality within those parts any abnormality within those parts can lead to infertility so one we have the vaginal canal or the vagina the vaginal canal then two we have uh, the cervix, the cervix, we have the uterus, we have the fallopian tubes or oviducts, we have the ovaries. Now let us first look at the, at the V or the vagina. The vagina is important for receiving the man's organ, reproductive system, organ, and the sperms, which is the one that receives, so that it directs where they're supposed to go. What is so important about this part? It has a specific pH. It has an acidic pH. There are a lot of people whose pH down there has been distorted and it has changed and it has changed from being acidic to alkaline. Sperms are naturally made to be to be thriving, to be to be living in a right way if they are in an acidic environment. So that means if your V is alkaline the sperms will not survive enough to reach 
that the upper center of the urethra, that keeps you. So, one of the tests that they have to do is to check your pH, your vaginal pH. It will be a factor in the menu, and all other things are well. That is the first thing. Now, we look at the cervix. The cervix, a cervix is a, it's like a door, a door that opens or closes. It's when a woman is pregnant, the cervix closes. It closes because it's protecting the external, the external environment and the internal environment from being from being into contact. So, and still, uh, when, in, the, in the time of becoming pregnant, the cervix is, is important in, in allowing the sperm to pass through. That means if you have a longer cervix, one, what we call atresia, that is somehow compacted or the, the sperms are not able to move through, that means you might have issues becoming pregnant becomes because sperms are not allowed to move through very well. You might become pregnant. Then we go and look at the uterus. What is the uterus? The uterus works as the bag or as the, the storage area where implantation takes place. It is where this future that the, the fertilized eggs, egg or ovum come and implant where it roots within the the female reproductive system in our language we call it navana navana because it carries navana it carries the baby so if there are any problems if there are any challenges or any diseases with the uterus you might find yourself unable to conceive why for example uh, we have we have fibroids if you have fibroids within the, the the uterus you might not be able to conceive because the environment is not favorable for this for this fertilized egg to implant for the sperm to pass through and maneuver through into the the ampulla where fertilization takes place if you have like endometritis endometriosis which is growth growth of growth of a tissue growth of the endometrium tissue outside or outside or externally from the uterus you might not be able to conceive if you have endometritis endometritis means when the endometrium or that that lining within the uterus is infected or sick or it has it has bacteria or any other diseases, you might not be able to do what? To conceive, or it's inflamed, you might not be able to, to conceive. Mm. If you have if you have what we call adhesions within, you might not be able to conceive. Within the uterus, now here we're looking at the uterus only. You might not be able to conceive. Mm. If you have if you have things like uh, Ashamani syndrome, Ashamani syndrome is when is when the uterus, which is supposed because uh, in a normal circumstance it's supposed to be open, it's supposed to be because it has to support a cavity or a space within. But however, if this cavity is adhered to each other, you might not be able to conceive. You actually will not be able to conceive unless treated. How does this come about? This is usually common in people who have done abortion, specifically using some type of methods, the surgical methods like DNC, irritation and curatage, because there is that scrapping, there is that scrapping of the endometrium layer. And and when that is done, during the process of healing, uh, these sides, the, the uterine sides, heal with scars which merge together like this. So you become unable to, to hold the baby oh, because there is no space, there is no cavity. And when this uterus is slippery, this this egg, this fertile egg might not be able to do what to, to attach and and form. That is also an important factor. Then we go to another another part of the female reproductive system, the part that we call fallopian tubes. Fallopian tubes usually have three reasons that make that make someone unable to conceive as they plan or as they want. The first one are adhesions. The second ones are blocked tubes, and the third ones is the, the, the third reason is for uh, salpingitis. Adhesions, adhesions are adhesions are like scars, are like scars following things like uh, things like uh, a PID, following things like uh, like. Like when you get when you get infected within the tubes and they heal they heal with scars so they leave what we call adhesions something like that then we go to, to blocked tubes you may find your tubes blocked you may find your tubes blocked blocked with scars for example if you 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 get a disease within the tubes and then yes you treat it but it heals and then leaves scars it's those scars that attach the way ashamani syndrome happens in the uterus it, it's the same way almost that this work and this way to do how it happens in the tubes and the tubes get blocked you, you may be unable to conceive now salpingitis salpingitis is the general term to describe sickness or disease or inflammation of the 
Ethiopian cubes. So if your if your Ethiopian cubes or the or the that are, are inflamed, they become thick within. So if they are thick within within, it means an organ or an egg will not be able to move from the ovary side to the ampulla where the fertilization is supposed to take place. And if if some or somewhere it maneuvers and it's unable, it's able to move and the sperms are able to, to, to meet, it might not be able to come back. The way adhesions or the way adhesions would bring that is the same way you get something like ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy is also another topic that you can watch the video. Is how you get an ectopic pregnancy. We look at another part, the ovaries. The ovaries. The ovaries are the reservoirs or the reserves for, for ovum that produce that that releases eggs. So if the ovaries have problems or if the ovary is unable to give us our eggs that we need for fertilization so we will be unable to conceive we usually have something like three reasons why why the either ovaries are insufficient enough and the first one is uh, in what we call insufficient ovarian reserves insufficient ovarian reserves means by the time this person was born did you know that by the time you get born all the the, the eggs that you will release in your lifetime are already there they have already been made by the time you were born. Hmm? So, if this person was born with insufficient uh, ovarian reserve, it means this person will be either missing out some month without releasing eggs, or will stop releasing eggs at an early age. And you, 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 you need to you need to ascertain that there are specific types of scan that looks at at, at counting the, the number of eggs, the reserve, to see if it is sufficient enough or not. Hmm? Some people will have the diseases like we call ophlitis. Ophlitis is inflammation or the sickness of the ovaries. If they are sick, the way you see, the, the, the way any other thing can get sick, especially infected with bacteria, you might not be able to release an egg until treated or handled in the right, in the right way. That is a glimpse of looking at only the female reproductive system and the role it plays, and the role it plays each part the role each part plays towards conception. So let us look at the hormones. We find someone has everything right, the other side, but then the hormones have issues. They have done all the, the necessary tests and everything is right the other side, but then the hormones have issues. There are main there are main uh, around six major female reproductive hormones that are important. That are important. And each hormone is supposed to be important and plays a certain important role towards conception whereby each hormone if each hormone is affected it affects someone in a different way though the symptom is the same the symptom because the, the main symptom is failure to conceive but then physiologically or within it plays that role differently we have you know hormones like reorganizing hormone polycostimating hormone we have uh, estrogen we have progesterone we have anti hormone all those hormones are important and each hormone should be handled with a, with, a, with a different kind of medication or with a different kind of kind of treatment. Giving an example, looking at the follicle stimulating hormone. The follicle stimulating hormone is released from the pituitary gland in the brain and comes to the ovaries. It stimulates it stimulates the ovary into producing or into the development of the egg or the ovum. So if this hormone is affected, everything will be okay, but this egg will not be initiated to develop. Okay. It's what we call a luteinizing hormone or LH. This hormone is important in injection or releasing of an egg from the ovaries. It means if everything is okay, if all the hormones are okay, but then this luteinizing hormone is not functional, it is not is insufficient, it means this person will not be able to inject an egg or an ovum. Okay? You will be getting what we call anovulatory cycles over and over again. You go, you see your periods over and over, but then say, there is no egg. There is no egg. Okay? Is what we call prolactin hormone. Prolactin hormone is important in in releasing milk, in milk production for lactating mothers or for breastfeeding mothers. But then, when this hormone is excessive, when this hormone is excessive, when you're not pregnant, you will not be able to conceive because it hinders all the processes of conception. That's why when someone is breastfeeding, we use this method as a family planning method, a natural family method. Why? Because there is that hormone we call prolactin hormone, which hinders infertility, which hinders conception. Okay, there's a hormone we call anti neuro hormone. This hormone is important in 
development that eggs your ovum into becoming a viable egg that can become fertilized and you get a viable baby so if this hormone is affected you will not be able to get the rightful egg in that case you will you will you will yes you will see all your cycle you will see your periods and you will know your ovulation date but then when you reach the time of of of, of, of fertilization the egg will not fertilize it will be more of like an egg consider a chicken egg without hmm, without an egg yolk will that be able to make a, a, a hen a chick no it cannot that was the overview and you see all of these things have specific analysis specific kind of testing specific kind of medications requires specific kind of handling specific kind of specific kind of depending on what the problem is you need to find exactly what the problem is before you start treating basically that was an overview that was an overview of of the causes of infertility and i have made videos on each 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 one of them if it's fibroids if it's uh endometritis if it's block tube if it's uh adhesion if it's hormones if it's uh, i made videos on each one of them and they're for you to watch that is it for today watch you match you get you in the next show thank you